The board encourages and welcomes comments and inputs from our community, but we cannot respond or deliberate on any subject that is not included on the posted agenda. Please limit your comments to five minutes and refrain, I'm sorry, to three minutes, our new, new rule, to three minutes and refrain from mentioning a name of an employee or student when voicing a concern or a complaint. As board policies provide alternative procedures through the grievance process, GF local, DGBA local, to seek resolution to a complaint. The superintendent's office, human resources, and administration in general can assist you in finding those procedures which are available online. You may mention an employee by their job title, or you may mention your, um, your own child's name. The first person that has signed up to speak is Mr. Damon Barone, speaking on item number nine. Greetings, Damon Barone, Ailey Fires, the parent, taxpayer, and alumnus. Over the last few years, Superintendent Henry David Chambers, Jr., Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources Elizabeth Villas Powell, and AFT Union President Veronica Thibodeau have been discussing teacher recruitment, retention, and multiple years of ongoing teacher shortages here in Ailey. If we review the actual data, teacher shortages are not a problem, are not the problem. Retention, retention, keeping our teachers is the real problem here in, in the district. In fact, Ailey FISD has the highest teacher turnover rate in the state of Texas. In a TASB survey, Ailey staff were asked what, what was their top reasons for leaving our district. Number one was administrative personnel, i.e. leadership. Number two was not feeling supported by leadership. And number three was a lack of resources being provided to teachers. These were the top three reasons why we can't keep our teachers. Notice that money was not the number one reason, despite that being the narrative repeated everywhere. Do our teachers deserve better pay? Absolutely. But their reasons for, their reasons for leaving the district, for, the reasons for teachers leaving our district is because of the results of decisions made by the district leadership. If they were to review the district's board books, one would notice that it says resignation letters were received by the following employees and list different options, which include retirement, relocation, personnel, re, personal reasons, and no reason given. Let us focus on the alleged no reason given responses. Are we, to, are we to assume that staff members took the time to create and fill out a resignation document stating that they quit for no reason, then subsequently submitted this almost blank document to Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources Elizabeth Villas Powell? On April 11, 2022, a teacher from Best Elementary, Maria Cortez, stated on Channel 13 News that she left the district due to safety concerns for staff and students regarding the multiple child abduction attempts during recess at the campus's playground during school hours. On page 23 of tonight's board books, it lists Ms. Cortez's resignation for no reason given. Instances like this always bring me back to Superintendent Chambers' infamous words when he first got to our district, that he and his administration can make data say whatever they wanted to say. Given that, there's no, given that there are so many people who have, who have resigned over the last 11 years under Superintendent Chambers' watch for no reason given, I question how the district has received the Houston Chronicle's top workplace rewards year after year. I guess when you have the culture of falsifying data to make it say whatever you want it to say, you can create narratives to fit whatever version of the story district leadership wants to publicize. Damon Barone, Ailey Fies, the parent, taxpayer, and alumnus. Go Bears. At this time, we have Dominique Barone, Agenda 6.5. Informally, so I'm not going to tape record this next part, and I ask that none of us tape record. I'd like to try to get some resolution to some things that I think that have been going on for quite a while. I don't know if Veronica shared with you what I'd like to try to do this afternoon. No. Well, this is around the, um, the harassment, the, um, that issue. Okay. Just the issues that you have. Uh, basically, I want you to put on the table the, the concerns that you're having. And with the two of us here, we want to see if we can try to resolve some of it, because we've got quite a bit of time left from now until the end of the year, that we want success on that campus. 
and whatever we can do to make that happen, I want to assist that. So I've received lots of uh, concern from you in regards to Carmilla filling Ms. Vandal, um, not treating you in your eyes with respect, and it happened usually since the carnival. Yes. So why don't you tell, I don't know that Carmilla knows how you feel, and I think it's important that she knows so that hopefully that can be corrected if that's the case. Okay. Um. I'm feeling like there's differential differential treatment being going on. I'm feeling like uh, there's deception going on. Policies and procedures are not being abided by. Uh, documentation is being falsified. Um, okay, let's talk about that so that she knows exactly. When you say procedures not being followed by the administrative staff? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, like such as uh, over-observing individuals without proper feedback, um, um, disrespectful uh, when she communicates to me in private in meetings, uh, her tone, her um, insinuations, um, stating in a court of law, really just badgering me and, and speaking to me as if I'm beneath her because she's the supervisor of the, or the principal of the school, um, openly talking about my personal business in front of employees. Okay, let's and, take one at a time and so I can okay. see how we can help you. Let's talk about the one about the employees, talking in front of other employees. Mm -hmm. Yes. So where did that happen and what, what was going on? Someone told me that she was in, after she had a, a and again, the only reason I know that is because it was told to me that uh, she was in the front talking to Miss. It's been over six years since this February 17, 2016 meeting with AFT Union President Veronica Thibodeau, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Elizabeth Velos Powell, Principal Carmilla Nanlaw, and Educator Damon Barone. My family are still waiting for our response from the district regarding our hour and 32 minute long meeting. Turning off the audio recording during a grievance con conference is like a police officer turning off his body cam to conceal evidence. No justice, no peace. Come on, baby. Girl. Board at this time, we have Miss Marie Helen Cortez. And her item is under the general under the general topic. My name is Maria Elena Cortez. I am here today to advocate for the protection of students and teachers during outdoor activities and recess. My mission is to bring awareness to the need to protect the children during school hours by building a fence and gates around the school playgrounds. On December of 2021, around noon, I was forced. Um, to deal with a very hard situation, a predator entered the playground at Best Elementary in Aleph, where I was teaching first grade, grabbed one of my students and tried to kidnap her. Students were screaming. I ran to save the girl. I got in between them, and the lady hit my right arm, then my second arm, dropping my phone and crashing it on the floor. Luckily, other teachers saw that the, the, what was happening outside and helped my students and myself get inside the building. When I got inside, I realized that I was missing a student. I panicked. I went to the rest. She had gone to the restroom and was on her way out when the lady saw her. The predator saw her and tried to grab her as well. Thankfully, another a staff member saw her and saved my student before it was too late. I could not, it could have ended very tragically. Since this occurrence, I was told that the police report file, there was a police report file, and I was hoping that um, they, they would take the right mes measurements. I emailed superintendent, and I also uh, emailed my lead staff at Best Elementary, but I got no response. Last Friday, uh, when I was in Ailey ISD, um, I had resigned due to the stress and the mental my mental exhaustion during this traumatic and uh, lack of support. I called Ailey. I mean, I went to the Ailey office, but they told me I could not. I could not uh, get uh, a copy of the incident report. And then when I tried to file, they told me I could not file because I, it was beyond the three months. I called Houston Police Department and they told me there's not such a thing, that you can file any incident at any time. I'm here to also ask uh, to please, I would like to officially request an open record request of what was filed in the for the school 
uh, for that incident. I was never interviewed or asked any questions in regards to that matter. And my student, who, who was one of the vic victims, was never never received any mental or psychological uh, evaluations. She was stressed, and due to the to not being able to speak, because w if I was working under the the Alify Z. I was not going to be able to speak the truth, and I could have been very uh, in a lot of trouble and been reprimanded. So today, I would like to also um, ask for proper training and handling in the future by the ALIF leaders, the ALIF police, and the staff to maximize the safety of our children at all schools. But mainly today, I'm asking to please help us build a fence that will protect the children or any gates or alarms that need to be there to protect the children during school hours. Thank you so much. We Thank trust you. that you will make the right decisions to make and protect our children. Thank if this you, was Cortez. your child, what would you do to protect them? Thank you. Thank you. Thelma D'Angelo. D'Angelo. And you get you can pronounce your name. I'm I'm pretty sure I misstated it. It's Thelma Delangio. Um, yeah, yo soy la mamá de de la niña que fue eh, tratada de robar en diciembre, y yo también vengo porque yo necesito que pongan ese game para que protejan a mi hija y a mi hijo que está en esa escuela. Eh, realmente, mi hijo ahorita están porque el jueves hace dos semanas atrás se metió otra persona. Y mi hija se alteró mucho. Attorney McBride, the time would probably have to be, be lessened or adjusted for, for the interpretation. Okay. So, Ms. Delafente. Well, before we. Superintendent <clears throat> Chambers. Ms. McBride. Is there a designation of who we can ask to interpret on her behalf? <clears throat> mean under the Open Meetings Act, does it specify the qualifications? No, just just as if someone needs language assistance, you, you are to allow them um, to have additional time. Right. Do you have someone that you would like to select? Uh, Rachel, ask, could you ask her if she has someone that she would like to interpret on her behalf? Well, we can ask for a volunteer to do it. Rachel, are you going to volunteer to interpret? You're going to volunteer to do it, or was it Ms. Cortez? Ms. Cortez? Rachel, okay, if she says that you're okay with doing it, we're okay, but it has to be her choice. Okay, all right. In December, in December of 2021, my daughter was tratada to sequestrar in that school, in the elementary school, because it was open. 2021. In December of 2021, your daughter? Yes. Her daughter was also, um, they tried to abduct her from Best Elementary. En esa área donde ellos salen al recreo. From the same area where they go to recess. Porque está abierto y cualquier persona puede entrar. Because it's open and any person can enter. So she's also asking for the gate. Entonces esa persona entró y trató de llevarse. Pero salieron los maestros y se la quitaron. So people tried to go in take the student, her, her daughter, um, but the teachers came out and were able to get her. She felt that, um, she says that her arm was scraped and she was in a lot of pain. Uh, pain due to how hard they had to pull her to get her away. Entonces, eh, la escuela, yo pedí consejería para mi hija y no me la han dado, ya ha pasado más de tres, cuatro meses. At the school, she's asked for counseling for her daughter and they have not given that to her. Entonces, no me han ayudado en eso y yo necesito algo, o sea, porque no me, no me da ninguna solución. 
So they haven't given that to her daughter, so she's asking for that because they have not given her any help with that. La semana pasada entró otro un señor y se sentó en los columpios de los niños y mi hija se alteró demasiado y estaba llorando. Last week, a gentleman entered the area and uh, was sitting on the swings, and so that uh, scared her daughter. Y los demás niños también estaban llorando, y por eso yo pido que si pueden poner un, un gay en, en esa área para que no entre más personas, porque mucha gente camina por ahí. And the other students were also um, scared, and so she's asking for the gate, because too many people go in there. Y yo todos los días, antes la maestra podía ayudarla, porque la cuidaba, pero ahora ella es sola. Me dice, mami, ¿ahora quién nos va a cuidar? And so her daughter tells her that who's going to take care of them now because the teacher's not there. Y yo cuando fui ahí uh, con la, la señora que está encargada de la escuela, solo me dijeron que lo sentían, que lo bueno es que no había pasado a, a mayores. So when she went to the school, the school said that um, they were very sorry, uh, that fortunately it didn't lead to anything more than, than what had happened. So she says every day she drops her daughter off with fear that she won't be able to pick her up in the afternoons. Por eso yo pido ese, ese gay para proteger a mi hijo, a mi hija y a los demás niños. And so that is why she's asking for the gate to protect her daughter and the other students. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delma. Thank you, board. That now concludes our public comment to posted agenda. Was the last uh, individual. At this time, I'm going to ask that Ms. D. Jones come for the donation report. <laughs> 